All right, thank you so much, Lagbaja, or should I say the late uh, Bola Ige. In fact, indeed, Anila Tigbadra. But not just prayer, we also have to work, work and work real hard. You're welcome. It's still the Daybreak Show on Rock City 101.9 FM here in the city of Abekuta Citizens Forum. Dele Ayodo is my name. And I am Toby uh, Joseph. Uh, well, um, our citizens from this morning, we'll be going to uh, the nation's ivory towns, uh, focusing especially on the uh, varsities that deal or that actually are into agricultural development and education. Uh, we have one very close to us here, that is the Federal University of Agriculture, uh, Berkota, uh, popularly called uh, FUNAB. Uh, but one thing, uh, one particular report uh, which we are going to examine this morning is that which is credited to the Honorable Minister of uh, Agriculture and Rural Development, Chief Aldo Ogbe, who recently said that uh, in the nation, as from now, 200 level students in agricultural universities or those who are studying agriculture must own farms from the second year and they will continue to farm till they graduate. And of course, after they graduate, they will continue to get support uh, from the alma mater so that they can go straight into agricultural production and not begin to seek white collar jobs uh, afterwards, after their graduation or after the service. That, in a way, he said, will boost agricultural productivity of the country. It will also ensure food security, adequacy of uh, food, uh, bring down commodity prices and food prices in the market and also help in raising uh, uh, millionaires, so as it were, uh, employers of labor uh, in the mode of this agricultural uh, graduate. That was what we'll be looking at this morning. And of course, we have uh, one of the students uh, of uh, FUNAB in the studio. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at this together. All right. Um, uh, yes, I met Jimo is... Uh, a student of Nab, like Toby just said, studying animal production and health. Okay, uh, well, it is his set or his category that the minister is actually looking at, uh, making life easier for them after leaving school. But Toby, I've also heard some people say, um, if you look at the statement of Aldo Hogbe, is a carefully choosing political word, um, ensuring that nobody holds him by the words after afterwards that what they especially have been government will create a suitable enabling environment from the public and private sector for these farmers or would be farmers irrespective of whether they are graduates of uh, the school to continue doing what they studied in school rather than belching it on the alma matter uh, well, uh, whether that is right or wrong is just their own position. Like you know, us, we don't have a position here. This is the voice of the people. It is what you think and say that we just re echo. Um, good morning and welcome to the Show, Ahmed. Good morning, sir. Okay, uh, Ahmed, give us your own opinion um, of that statement. Okay, thank you very much. It's a very right statement, if you want to say, from point of sincerity. But the fact remains that the government of Nigeria has not taken agricultural uh, production serious. What do I mean? Uh, during the post-colonial era in Nigeria, there used to be uh, residential farm settlements. At least all states in the western region have agricultural farm settlements. I know of nine in Oshun states. There are about nine in Ogun states also. All these farm settlements have buildings and infrastructure for farmers. They have land that they give out to farmers. You go there, you farm. Well, you have building where you can actually sleep at night. There's good road network. So everything is there. There's agricultural uh, uh, consultancy services also. There's machinery that can actually help the farmers to plow their land and till the land and get bumper harvest at the end of the year. But that is no longer in place. When we say business, what is business in business? Profit making is business in business. You cannot tell me that the business you are doing as a student is, it will be the same. And like, like the business you are doing as a graduate. If you look at it now, there are a lot of distractions around. You must, I, I think you believe in me that there are a lot of distractions out there. Cybercrime and all. Students no longer 
they, they are no longer interested in what they are really studying. But how can we reposition their mind? It's not about aspiration. They've chosen the career that they want to study agriculture. That is the aspiration. They have it already. What they need now is inspiration. If you want to give them inspiration, not by, not by saying that they should combine agriculture, uh, not, not that they should combine field farming with the normal curriculum they are having in class. Mm, but, let's clear uh, this. I know that um, many of you in these agri schools also have farming as part of your course. Yes, we have practicals that we do. We have practicals that we do, but not like we have a farm. Individuals don't have farm, but there are some practical courses that we are, we have to take before we can transcend from one, one level to another. So it's not that the individuals then have the farm. But in, in Federal University of Agriculture at Belkuta, when you are in 400 level, there's something we do, we call it farm practical year. You must have seen some students going around with green uniform. So during this 400 level, you don't go to class at all. What we do is exclusive farming. It's divided into three. We, we have livestock section, we have crop farming on campus, and we have uh, crop farming off campus also. Where students are allowed to raise chicken, they plant maize and they plant vegetables, both leaf and uh, fruit vegetables. That is what they do. So you have that right yeah. now. Well, what Dennis is trying to say is that uh, in that particular year, yes. uh, are, uh, are the students are portioned land, plot of yes. land for yes. exclusive yes. farming yes. that you're talking yes. about. Yes. But we still have challenge with this because the, the system is not mechanized enough. Okay. One thing is, if I'm going to become a farmer at the long run after graduation without looking for any job, if I want to be a job creator, I'm not supposed to cultivate one acre of land and say I'm farming. At least as a graduate, I should have at least 10 acres, uh, t t 10 acres of land to start with, at least. So, and I can't do this with crude implements. Where are the machines? Where are the machineries? Okay, these are the, the, the practical. Kind of, the, 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 kind of, the, the kind of farming we do during farm practical year. We don't have the necessary uh, uh, farm machineries that we can use as a graduate. Though we are being trained the way we should be trained. But as a graduate, we cannot use those things. Okay, so, so graduates have not seen combined harvester work before. Okay, if I want to farm now, if I'm if I'm cultivating like 20, 100 acres of land, you cannot expect me to, to get my family members or manual labor. Where is the manual labor? The manual labor is not readily available. But I think what the federal government should do at this particular point in time is to make sure that they rejuvenate the industry. How can they go about this? I was talking about the issue of farm, resident, uh, uh, farm settlement the other time. If we have these farm settlements uh, restructured and rebuilt, I believe that after graduation, the, instead of going to secondary schools to be serving and teaching agricultural sciences or mathematics, we are supposed to be sent to these farm settlements, give incentives, support, give seedlings, give machineries, and give access to road network that actually facilitate easy farming. Okay? We will give uh, social amenities that we actually deserve. If we have these things, we will be paying the government because we will be making profits as a result of the farming. When we farm, we make money, and there will be a particular charge that the government will be collecting from us. And I believe if a step like this is taken, this is the right step in the right direction. So, That's okay, the only yeah, thing that can make I, the agriculture make, country uh, Let's go into that statement, even though some people have said it's not detailed enough. The minister is saying at 200 levels, you own a farm in school. Um, whether that is going to be commercial farming or practical or just for the purpose of studying, but he has also added that 60% of your score, of your mark, will be based on what you have achieved with this. Now, what's the average student in the university that will have a 200 level, the number, average number of students that will be in 200 level. It depends. Like in my department, when I was in 200 level, we were about 120 students. Okay, good. 100 in one department. Yes. Conservatively, then let us say for now five departments. No, we have 13 departments of agriculture. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's state that. Let's work on 10. Okay. Uh, just for the purpose of this discourse. Let's work on 10. You say you have 100, right? Yes. Um, but that's 1,000. Yes, 1,000 students. 1,000. Let's say we, have, we now have 1,200 level students. Okay. Now, you are just talking about the the size of the landmark needed for agri. Okay. Do you think any school can 
give a thousand hectare yearly? Of course. They can't afford to give a thousand hectares yes. farmland for yes. these students. For, for now, has over 10,000 hectares of land. Okay. For now, I have not used 10% of its land. No, no, this is why I mean. If if Funab has ten thousand yes. and two hundred level has taken one thousand, uh, I'm just looking at the average mathematical arithmetic of a um, hundred hectare. No, sorry, one hectare for a student, okay. which gives us one thousand. Okay. Is that one hectare all right for this kind of uh, topic you are looking at? Uh, actually, I would say it's all right. Okay, but so in fact, you know, I was saying something the other time that the business you do as a student will be different from the business you do. No, this is this, this is going to be in facet. It's graduating from two hundred, you move to three hundred. Yes. From three hundred, you move to four hundred, yes. and then after living school at five hundred, you can now expand it. But what the minister is saying, within these three years of practical experience, yes. you will have been matured enough. To go into the world. I, I need to tell you that at present we have challenges in agriculture. Climate change is the major challenge now. And you cannot expect a students that's asked to, that have to be reading for exam and at the same time be cram, be, be cracking his brain to overcome climate challenge. Instead of we making those students go through this, why can't we uh, upgrade our farm industry and the farm settlement that we have and allow students to go on holiday, like holiday farming school? during the period like three months break that they normally have instead of going around and playing around they actually go for industrial training in you know, all these farms they have all those segments will have uh, an upgraded infrastructure the machineries will be there everything will be in full operation there's no uh, i know how to do this i don't know how to do this you will be able to feature in all units of such settlements and i believe through that process it is better than saying students should own farm on campus. Okay, now I, I mean one one good thing that this uh, throws up is the fact that many students like like you are very much passionate and interested in farming. Am I correct? Of course, we are very correct. Now, what many of them complain about, um, those that have interacted uh, interacted with, is funding, yes. lack of capital, it's a major lack problem. of land. Those are major issues. Now, wh how do you want the government? in collaboration with the institutions and the agricultural institutions in this case FUNAB collaborate and work together to to make sure that there is an ease in getting this either land or either capital so that you can do apart from the on-campus farming you can also start a small one off campus which will metamorphose into a big farm after you graduate i think things are changing in the country now like uh, i know of bank of industry that it used to give loan to graduates yes. after nyc probably they use their certificate to uh, as a guarantee or so, a uh, collateral mm -hmm. or something and i I, th I think we have those ones but before you can go there and access loan before they can give you loan you need to talk to them convincingly they need to be sure of the enterprise you want to invest in. You need to be sure whether you know what you are doing or you don't know what you are doing. And that is why I said it is better for students to have access to industrial training, full operational farms where they can actually know what is going on there. They know the pros and cons, the challenges faced by the farmers. They need to stay with somebody that have actually lost millions of naira, gained trillions of naira. I don't know if you understand. Somebody that have gone through uh, profit and loss. So when you when you have such experience, I think it's better than you staying be within the four walls of the university. Is I said you're practicing farming. Is there any kind of scheme uh, put in place, either through uh, the institution or through your department or agro support services of uh, the university that provides credits or capital? Now raises capital for for you students. No, no, no. What what, what like no? What I know is about a particular training. I, I think it's in the Department of Horticulture in College of Plant Sciences. There's one professor there. I, I think Professor Ayila Agbi. He has this work and learn scheme whereby he gathers students together. They work on the farm and they learn alongside. He gives them seed. They plant cucumber, leaf vegetable, and others. And after planting planting it, they sell it, and the money is theirs. We, we have something like that in and that's his personal contribution it, it, that, I, I, that is his own way of improving the system we have a lot of professors doing stuff like that also but in terms of credit facilities we don't have 
Okay, now if students are to impact on what the minister is proposing on a farm in the school, um, how do, do we need do do you think students will need finance money for this purpose? Because this is just experimental. Because you are talking about Luna and others, would they need money to even do this kind of uh, farming? The minister is I, I don't know the size is looking at. But I must tell you that with the kind of farm practical year we have in the Federal University of Agriculture Abel Kuta already, I don't think we need that. Because if you really want to do what it's talking about, like I said earlier, it should be on a kind of commercial scale. If you are going to need that, there are still a lot of things that would need to be provided. You know, agriculture should be mechanized if you want to make millions from it. So where are the machineries? Federal government needs to get serious. We have just three Federal Universities of Agriculture in Nigeria. I believe if federal government is serious with this move, it's what they can do. But until they are serious, that they want to take it as commercial base, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's like a joke to give, me. Give us a figure, uh, an idea of how many harvesters, uh, planters, uh, plowers that you have in Funam, provided by either the federal government or the institution. Okay, I, I actually, I can't give you the figure because I don't have the information, but I know we have some. Do you see them working? Have you ever come across harvesters or plowers or planters? <laughs> I'm sorry, I've not come across combined harvester before. Mm. Working. I've seen it before, but I've not seen it working before. Now, where did you see it and how? We have it in school. Okay. Oh, it is not operational. It's, it's that, it, it is not operational, yes. Okay, it's not that you saw them in the system. Yes, we, we have tractors that are working, we have some other ones, but that combined harvest, I've not seen it before. I've mm -hmm. seen Rija before, I've seen Planter before, but I've not seen them work before. Now, Ahmed, you just said we have, there are three um, universities of agriculture in the country. Will you say... Three, three federal universities of agriculture. Yes, universities of agriculture. Will you say these universities are doing enough to meet the challenges, to solve the challenges of agri-production and the food needs. With what I'm the saying, country. they are doing enough. It's the federal government that needs to push them the more. Mm. They are doing enough. You know, yeah. so, so we, we so human beings... you say that there are several of you students after graduating do not want to, even on your own, do not want to go into practicing um, agri in any form. You prefer to go for the white collar job, or when some of you, I've seen some of you who say they set up business, and the business is not in any way related to agriculture. It is the challenges. It is the challenges that makes them run away from agriculture. Some of some of us have actually taken pain to go through some things. Like I, I can remember when I finished my farm practical year last year. I had to go to a farm as far as Ijebui uh, Lotsi around the Epe. I have to go down there. I used about two months there. There are mosquito, no no lights, nothing, nothing. I was suffering, but at least I knew I want to learn, and I gained what I wanted to learn. What I wanted, because at the long run, I was able to learn how to install a uh, irrigation system. I was not taught that in school. Uh, I was not taught how to install irrigation, but I know how to do it now. That is the issue of industrial training that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So there are some things that you cannot get from school. But federal government as a stakeholder that wants to gain massively from agriculture should provide those things. They should provide the support. Now, if you were to uh, choose which system you would uh, uh, prefer, is it that you expect that a part, a larger chunk of your tuition fees yearly is pulled together. Mm -hmm. And when I say pulled together, that means it's uh, put in a pool, okay. all right, and then used to set up this agricultural farms for you students of agriculture, or the federal government set up a scheme that will provide loans, credit facility that you must repay over time before your graduation in the universities to actually follow this idea or this uh, policy that the Ministry of Agriculture is uh, tinkering with. If our school fees is, is to be pulled together, I think it will be business as usual. 
why do you people will not be serious and all but if they know that okay fine this is an this is a business enterprise and for the big groups for those that feel they have the argument to go into it i think the people will get more serious Let, let's look at the other angle of the minister's statement support from the uh, alma matters do you think this will also work or how do you think it will work it will work because there are a lot of research ongoing in the university this research is if incorporated into daily agricultural production it will go a long way in helping us for example i'm in the department of animal production and health and my project of my final year project is on the in vitro digestibility of neem seed normal dongoyaro tree when you see it around the seed there are a lot of research that have actually been ongoing. They said it is highly nutritional. Some said it is highly medicinal. So since it is medicinal, can we incorporate it into feed that will be given animals? If incorporated, is it digestible? That is what I'm working on. So if it is digestible and it can be incorporated and it's okay, it's all right. We can give recommendations to farmers out there that, okay, this is the result of our research. Go about, go, go, go about doing this. It will help you. I, I think it's okay. All right, uh, Daybreak Show, Rock City 101.9 FM. This morning, we are looking at uh, what appears to be a common proposal from the federal government for students studying agri from 200 level to begin to own farms. This is their own way of solving the challenge of food and agri in the country. And we have with us a final year student of Animal Production and Health Federal University of Agriculture, Ahmed Jimo, looking at the prospect, viability, challenges of this policy. We will really be happy if we have um, any or some of you that are agri teachers now, not the ones in the university, those who are teaching agri science. I hope they still teach it to be in yes, the secondary yeah. schools. Yeah. Uh -huh. Those of you teaching it in secondary schools, agri so science and animal boundary. No, there's another in, one called animal boundary. Yes. No, in secondary school. Yes, I, I think they are doing animal boundary in secondary school. Uh, okay, that would be good. Grade. I'll be happy. We will be happy if you have some of you, any of you, call in uh, on this program. This is for you, this time around. Uh, not lecturers, I repeat. Let's have those who are teaching it from the secondary school. We'll open the telephone line straight away for those of you there listening. 0809-8687-344 or 0909-146-9670. recall that uh, uh, very last week also, uh, governing councils of the three federal universities of agriculture met with the Minister of Agriculture. Yes. And it was at that was, point. And that was what he was telling them. He was telling them they should focus on their core mandate, which is agricultural education, transformation, and modernization. Production. Uh, 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 which, which, of course, will help uh, uh, food production. Now, um, do, do you agree with this that that should be the first step uh, that both the federal government and the universities must take? Before we now dovetail into these uh, details of uh, uh, farming by students. Okay, let me let me go by what Dr. Hancom said. I don't know if you understand what he said very well. He mm -hmm. said those that want to do agriculture should do agriculture. Should be the ones to go to the university for it for for for, for, for agriculture. Yes. You know, in, in Federal University of Agriculture, I'm not good to study we, we have many sciences. courses. We have social sciences too. That, that's, that's what that's he's why saying. He's saying. That is a distraction. That why should the Federal University of Agriculture be offering <laughs> social sciences and minor courses? Well, Even actually, they are, in different, they, they, are, they are in different colleges. So I, I would say it is not bad why? doing social sciences. Why? There are some universities in the United States of America that they started as the University of Agriculture, but now they offer medicine and many other courses. It's, it's all about on serious graduate level. It, 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 I would say it's about no, if there are courses at graduate level. If I know, level, you, you know, there wouldn't be, be right. distraction. If I want to study agriculture, I'm offered agriculture and I'm studying agriculture, and all my colleagues also want to do agriculture and they're studying agriculture. I mean, those that are in the same college. You know, though we have issues like some people, somebody wants to study microbiology, probably because he was not able to make the oh, past. Okay, work I, I made, I, I wait, 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 hold it, hold it, I made. Let me just rephrase the question based on the, the oh, okay, control. Okay. Now, from this policy, yes, will a student of microbiology, yes, or computer science, or those in the management colleges, so how do we, how, how do they own the farm? No, because I, I, as I said earlier. We have different colleges. 
like different faculties. We know we we have different. So, so they will be part of the scheme. They, they, they won't be part of the scheme. Okay. All right, let's different. add the next one. Somebody right. is uh, there waiting. Hello. Um, it's going to be. Let, let me quickly say this. Yes. I would say that it is distraction that is the problem of agriculture in Nigeria. In 1960, there was no federal investment of agriculture in Nigeria, not one. And agriculture contributes to 65 percent of GDP. Then, after the oil boom, it got reduced to 25 percent. Since that time, since 1970, we are still struggling. We are at 20, 28%. What do you make of this? All right, let's add uh, this call. Uh, perhaps uh, the last for this segment. Hello, morning. Yeah, and that will be the last um, call for this segment. We'll be back after the 10 o'clock news. We are looking at the government policy trust as pronounced by the Minister of Agriculture, Audio Bay that uh, our Greek student in Nigeria's University of Agriculture from 200 level will begin to own farm. It, it will form 60% of their scores for graduation. And we have a final year student of animal production and health. Federal University of Agriculture here with us, Ahmed Jimo. We'll be back after the 10 o'clock news. In the meantime, yes, keep sending your messages to our short code, three two one two zero but remember to type r o c k that's rock first that's the first thing you do we'll be back all right you're welcome back it's still the direction rock city 11.9 fm the voice of the people our citizens from this morning what we're looking at is uh, the policy trust and directive coming from the minister of agriculture and rural development honorable minister chief aldo obe uh, saying that uh, from now, 200 level students studying agriculture in the federal universities of agriculture across the country, all three of them must own farms from their second year, and then that will metamorphose into a commercial farm after they graduate with uh, support and uh, contribution from their alma mater. And that is what we're looking at this morning. We have uh, a, an undergraduate in the studio. Ahmed, uh, who is also looking at this, has been able to, uh, to provide uh, detailed information as regards uh, the nitty gritties, uh, the challenges that uh, undergraduates uh, taught, uh, studying agriculture are facing uh, in universities and what not only the alma mater must do, but also what the federal government must do to create that enabling environment and to inspire many of these uh, students to actually consider agricultural development and production on a large scale. Uh, Ahmed, before we went on the break, we were, uh, one Mr. Is that Ajibola? Yeah, called. Yeah, former director. Uh, and former director, and we was uh, able to actually open our eyes into some of the uh, the, the role to the system, why federal government is failing to actually invest, or why government at all levels is failing to invest in agriculture. When you look at uh, some of the reasons he alluded to, uh, does it still discourage you that federal government, so state government, and local government might not pay the due attention to agriculture as they should, uh, even though you are interested in going to it in, uh, on a large scale? Yeah, thank you very much. I need to tell you something. Uh, farming is a profession of hope. If you, are far, if you are a farmer, you should be very grateful because there's no way when you drop a seed, it will grow. No matter the challenge, it will come out. Though you may not reap what you're supposed to reap, but miss the challenges, you still get something out of it. Government is not serious, but that does not stop me from going into agriculture. So you're not discouraged? Of course. When, when, when I was growing up, my dad was retrenched before I could even say my name. He, he stopped working before that time. And since then, he has been doing farming. And here I am. I'm the last child of my family, in final year in the Federal University of Agriculture. And that is what he used. In of course. Years. And he's still doing that. I just traveled down from my hometown to this place today. It was one that gave me money that I used to come here. But did he play a major role in your choice of uh, uh, education? Mm, actually, no. He, he didn't you... even influence it. I could remember when I was in GSS3, I cultivated two, uh, two plots of land behind our house to plant melon, GSS3. After then, there was a time his goods were sick and I didn't attend to them. And I was like, she was like a Greek. I was like, did I tell you that? 
you know, it's just I just have flair for it. For it. And so you develop that passion. Of course, and I'm still developing it. Okay, so let's uh, move back to uh, this now. Let's get questions. I'm coming from Camp Area. Good morning, sir. Hello, good morning. Thank you, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My own my own opinion about the policy is that is this program meant for the dedicated agricultural students? or circumstantial agricultural students. Well, maybe you explain the difference between dedicated and circumstantial. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Mufusa. Some students are in this faculty of agric circumstantial. Some put them for <coughs> chemistry, some put them for physics. But they find themselves in soil science and land management. They will not put in their very best in that soil science. Even when you fix a draft, very nutritious food. It will not have the same body structure with a giant person. If federal government provide all the necessary amenities, all the necessary requirements, they might not achieve their goal at the end of the day. Something is wrong with the structuring. Let them offer students that are dedicated to agricultural courses, agri courses to do in the university. Not them changing them to chemistry, biology, physics, and expect them to put in their very best. No, it won't work that way. Someone that wants to study chemistry, you put them in animal production and health. Even when you beat them funds, you establish funds, they will go and use that funds to hire labor that will work instead of them to use that to train themselves. We will not achieve this goal at the end of the day. Let them work with the structuring, let them work with the placement so that the right people will be at the right place at the right time. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. I think you are tactically agreed with what uh, earlier called Dr. Duncan. Yeah, also, I, I understand also. what he's trying to say. Like in Federal University of Agriculture, Abeok, that where I come from, uh, some students, after they fail to meet the requirement for the course they want to study, uh, the school don't want to discard them, and they feel they can still be useful in making the agriculture of the country great. So they change their departments. Some of them later develop passion in the agricultural departments, and some of them would never have interest. Even some of them would tell you that after this degree, they would have to go and opting for another degree. And begin another course. You understand. So that's what he's trying to say. Okay. Yeah, that so, uh, of before. course, students like that, this kind of policy will always uh, will only batter them rather than uh, breed them. Yes, yes. I think the right thing to do is just to restructure the whole system, the whole educational system. Look into the curriculum as well. All right. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Yes, Good morning. morning. Uh, um, so, uh, uh, I want to disagree with the notion that a Greek uh, means, uh, University of Africa has no business with accounting or business administration. Uh, can, can, we stick, uh, can you speak on the topic first? Okay. The topic that uh, students should be given a uh, plot of land Yes, that it's now composed to form 60% of their graduating mark, 200 level from 200 levels who must own a farm. Percentage of uh, Americans that are into agriculture, there are very few. The problem with us, with our leaders, is in their inability to procure the necessary equipment for agriculture. Now. I, I have been in farming. I have tried to get a ordinary tractor. I found it difficult to get in a in, uh, yeah. To buy or to hire? To hire, you would. You want you to do uh, this, uh, this uh, they, they place a very high price on you, and when you look at the cost you will see that when, at the end of the day, not breaking you. This has, the government should buy this in a month. All and right, thank you. Thank you. Two minutes. Let's add this call. After that, we'll move away, check out the messages that we have on a short hello, code. Good morning, Dele. Hello, good morning, hello. Good morning, Dele. Good morning, Dele. Good morning, sir. Yeah, my name is Honorable Larry Jack Larry J. I'm calling from the People's Parliament in Abel Let me quickly thank Rock City for bringing. Uh, 
agriculture of the team of yeah, I can see it's the only radio station that is really emphasizing on it. Let me go straight to my point. You've been clamoring, you've been saying several times that you know, government needs to diversify, move away from monopolistic you know, economic policy, you've been trying the exemption of Nigeria, let's try to culture is going to help us give a lot of uh, work to your unemployed graduates. Yes, I want to agree with how the Yeah, as well as he is, he's trying his best. Now he's started just for the year now. You will not believe it. Uh, it has never happened in Nigeria, it has never happened in since I was born. But we thank God now for that government that is exporting that. So, if the children who have their farms like in Zaini says, and it's going to determine their mark again, this is something that is very important to encourage our culture and other people must start it in other institutions. We want to have a pleasant day. God bless you. All right. God bless you. Thank you for your contributions. Let's start over with the calls. Let's go to uh, quickly go to the messages. Uh, this one says, I greet everyone in the studio, especially my boss, Mr. Jimmo. Production, processing, and storage should be encouraged with infrastructure put in place. It doesn't matter if they own a farm, but what matters most is the financial gain of their students. Providing all the necessary implements by the federal government will improve food production as well as raw materials for local industries. Loans should also be granted to interested students. Honorable Mankat Yusuf from FUNAP sent in that one. It's a good idea from the minister, but the workload should be reduced. Students need to be exposed to more practicals in the industry, and credit facilities should be available for students to farm while in the school, not only to give land. Thanks. Shewo Akeloye from PG for NAB. And this one says, the idea that students of University of Agriculture should have farms is good, but who funds the farms? Students or government? Alagujo from Ijoko sent in that one. Good morning, House. Please, farming is all about passion. Enough of rhetorics by government. Big farmers in Nigeria are retired military men, lawyers, doctors, etc., because they have money to invest. If agricultural students with genuine interest in farming should be encouraged with all input, you'll be surprised that agri-graduates are not up to 20% of Nigeria's most successful farmers. That's Carl Day from Rounda. I support uh, the minister's proposal. The idea will increase agricultural production in the country. Imagine FUNAB in our community with no agricultural benefit to the people in its environs. Uh, Olu Odewale from Obantoko sent in that. Victor Ojo says, uh, okay, this has nothing to do with what we're discussing this morning. Let's quickly look at uh, uh, Facebook comments. This one says, we are presently in a world where technology is gradually taking away our morals, our godliness, our fear of God, our respect for elders, culture, and collapse of mental health. Okay, that's uh, Shipelu uh, sending in that. Omiride Samuel says, I hope I'm not late for the program. Good morning. My opinion is this. The agriculture sector is a sector that can absorb every other sector if well managed. Therefore, why can federal government utilize the service of NYC, by which federal government will acquire a vast area of land, build clinics which can absorb medical students to take care of the workers, laboratories for agricultural research, and many more that can absorb, if not all, but part of our graduates, rather than talking about our Greek students having a piece of land for cultivating without any support from anybody. I have passion for our Greek, but every chance I had failed. All right, uh, those are the comments. Uh, keep your messages coming. 32120 is uh, the shortcut number. We have tweets uh, also uh, coming in. This one just trickled in from uh, Professor Agwala AAA. Okay, before that of Professor Agwala, this one from Debra Debra says, Daily without missing words. Uh, Government is never serious about agriculture as a real economic revamping venture. Uh, is it hoes and cutlasses that they are going to use after production? Where would the produce be stored? Is it to be so cheaply sold at giveaway prices? Okay, those are questions from Debo Shumawali. And uh, Yami Da Vinci says, uh, Mr. Yudo and uh, Mr. Joseph, let us be real with ourselves. Even if the ministers want to fool us, this is a policy dead on arrival. This is 21st century, and our minister wants our best minds and hands the future of this country to be using holes and cutlasses for farming. 
Professional farmers are having challenges with machineries, farming pews like fertilizers and cutting facilities. Yet our ministers want our students uh, to face the same while trying to pass their examinations. It is a useless policy, really. Shirley John says this is a farm settlement I rented from Ogosho at Oyo area. The menace of Lani Hetzman is discouraging me there. Uh, Shirley John actually attached a picture of uh, a farm, of, uh, of a farm settlement that he supposedly uh, rented from the Ogosho River Basin Development Authority. All right, uh, more tweets uh, coming in. Uh, let's take this call first, and then we'll go back. Uh, we we'll come back to the tweets and the messages. Hello. All right, thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, good morning. Hello, good morning. Okay. Good morning. Please, the time pass. I don't know what's up this now. Whatever you read, yes, now. You have to do it at social. At two hundred level, you do read, which we are called CPP for crop production and EF for animals. Whatever you read, even if, if, if you if, if you read mathematics, who ever pass that thing will have it into a different thing. This cut out of the minister, if we is elected to this minister to have place one, it needs to give a try. But you be reserved for the students who really ask for the mathematics. If the club of the accommodation, no. For, for now, the new steps are in few days and not specific. All right, thank you, Colonel Abi. Your call is also important. Let's have you. Hello. Um, these are tweets uh, from Professor Gula AAA. I see how the August statement as mere political. If his government is serious, our Greek universities must be well funded to get the desired result. Forget about Ogbe at the federal level. What is the governor doing in Ogun State about agriculture, jamboree and window dressing? APC government is failing us. I'm just laughing. 60% farming and 40% academic work. Who are the people to do the academic research work later? This cannot work. Uh, Oshumi Wafatai says, uh, so what is he going to use to pay the money uh, when you say no? The poll is uh, shifted yet. Okay. Adibwa uh, Adibwali says it is a good policy for students to own farms as a policy detected, but the question is with what implement will they farm? All right, and uh, this one from Yemi Da Vinci says I agree with Mr. Jimo that a better policy is starting industrial attachment for students and lecturers of agriculture to inspire more students. Yeah, Vichy wants to say, Professor Ramos Seles some days ago has already propounded a more holistic solution. We need a thorough overall of our, of our system. Uh, what we have in Nigeria is an examination system and not an educational system. How many agricultural students want to study agriculture? That's a fundamental, fundamental question that we need to address. I'm starting even in Rock City, there will be a great courses. Uh, graduates. We need restructuring. All right, uh, Patriots Lacon says, I think that policy is good enough. They can take a cue from FUNAB's farm practical year, which is for 400 level students. All right, uh, that's okay. We have more tweets coming in. This one from Leshi Olari says, Ogo State Government should look into the agriculture in the state. Because it is not well funded. Okay, let's go back to the short code messages. This one says Ever before this policy, varsities have been doing farming. Let the government empower the grassroots farmers and the local government. I came back, Bola from Fajo, sent in that message. Kudos to your guest, he spoke very well, but the problem we are facing in this country is our government. They are not sincere enough, they don't support agriculture. And they also pay less attention to the sector. Government needs to support the sector by supplying all their needs. Even the idea of giving land is good, but implementation is a problem. BC or Paride from a Meko center that one. Nobody should run away from that word specialization, for it brings a lot of advantages. So tell me what is the role of an agricultural institution like FUNAB 
intruding into management courses, law, physical sciences, and the rest, whereas there are conventional schools all over. So a specialized school should produce certain commodities and closes its eyes on all types of goods. That's Kade or Lumide. Uh, Ahmed, can we just uh, have maybe you have comments, something to add to those uh, contributions from the people? Okay, like I have always been saying that the university are doing enough, but it's the government that needs to get serious. Uh, something happened in Kwara State some years back when we wanted to start Shunga Farm. I don't know if you know about Shunga Farm. Uh, the government of Kwara State actually invited some of the displaced farmers from Zimbabwe. When they got around, they have a kind of public private partnership production whereby they engage in farming. And today, Shunga Farm produce in, at full operational capacity in a day. They produce 10,000 processed, processed chicken and 50,000 liters of raw milk per day. Can you imagine? That is a state. Just invited 13 farmers from Zimbabwe. But can these uh, agric universities do such a thing even while combining it with that? They need funding. The universities are underfunded in Nigeria. That's why I said it is the federal government that will make things right. They are the one in charge. Thank God the minister said he wants to transfer the uh, Federal Universities of Agriculture to uh, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture. But I don't know where that is done, but if it is possible, I, I think we'll, it should be better, provided the university will be more funded. Because it's a garbage in, garbage out something. When they fund the university well and they are able to go into farming, I believe they will have more, more, more money. All right, calls 0906. Eight seven three four four. You were saying something yeah. before that call. Yeah. In addition to what the other caller said, I would say farming is something that is more than science. Farming is a culture. Only will you see a family that doesn't have a farmer in Nigeria. Every family they have a farmer. So we are naturally farmers in Nigeria. We have interest in farmer, but just that the environment is not enabling enough. What the government just needs is to improve the way of life of people and may, let them see reasons why they can be billionaires through agriculture. If agriculture in Nigeria must be productive at all, Nigerian government needs to do the following. They need to put in place infrastructures and machineries to ensure practical training on university campuses. They need to revive and rebuild the state of what you say to ensure Nigeria. practical training, is that not what the minister appears to be saying? It is not, it's not owning a farm. Or if at all they want to own a farm, this should be in place first. This should be prerequisites. Because you can, he's saying that they own a farm. He doesn't say, he doesn't say he's going to give them infrastructures and uh, uh, machineries. You remember? He just a 60% practical, 40% theory. He didn't say we are going to produce the following. And that's why I feel he should say first, if at all he meant this. Okay. He should tell us what he wants to give us first and what he expected of us. If it's able to tell that there will be infrastructure, there will be machineries and all, then you have to own a farm. We gladly want to do it. Our friends that would like to be on farm for a long period of time, they are so passionate about farming. But there is no necessary prerequisite to do farming. Another thing is, government needs to provide grants to undergraduates. They need to provide incentives like fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, seeds and seedlings. Without these things, the, the minister is joking, I must say. All right, we'll go back to the telephones. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Zero nine zero nine. Good morning. morning. One four six. Good morning. Nine morning. six seven zero. Yeah, my name is Tulusola Johnson. Yes, the government always come out with uh, talking for talking speak. When you said you were going to encourage people to go into farming, as the government put some certain things in place, things like silos where these things, excess produce, will be stored into, have they made provisions for that? No. Government will encourage the new people, especially you can catch them young from the school level as a gentleman in your city. We will know those that are interested in farming. Those are the people the government should give money to. They should provide land for them so that these people can go into real farming. Whatever farming they want to go into, other crops, uh, piggery, whatever name you call it, as long as they are serious and they want to do it, those that are producing crops, as the government put silos in place for them, as the government look for a market for them, for market for them, where they will sell the excess they produce. 
government have not done all this, what they are doing is this service, and then some of us don't believe they are uh, very straightforward in whatever they are doing. They should leave political talks and then serious about farming in this country. It will help all of us a lot in this country. Good morning. God bless my country, Nigeria. All right, so let's add one cover. We'll then check the message out. Yes, your turn to speak. Good morning. Good morning, Toby. Good morning. That is from Kai Engage on the line. Thank you for coming. Good morning, my dear students in the house. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, I don't know how much time I have, but it, is, it suffices to say that the federal government, if everything is about uh, the issue of expanding agriculture, rural production, here should go all out to fund it massively. I want to thank you. Uh, these students, they will be one if they have necessary implements that can uh, assist work effectively on the field. For instance, there is a instrument called uh, brush cutter. And individual students can clear large uh, acreage of uh, land in a couple of weeks with that simple implement. If that is given to each student, they would like to farm, even after leaving school. If helicopters are provided for each of the universities and all the combined other cars, all the uh, chapters, uh, and all those other uh, implements that can assist. Having large acreage of land made available, if they are available, I think uh, helicopter is provided can assist in spraying those uh, farmland. It will make land available. You know the issue of land, uh, the issue of production uh, especially, uh, as great uh, the, the, the important thing there is a land availability and land preparation. So if there are these implements and uh, that can encourage students, lecturers, and uh, field staff to go into a, a large exit, I don't think we have any problem. Doctor Ide. Uh, because of our time, I need to also ask you, because you're also part uh, of this, as a teacher or a lecturer uh, in the Agri University, do you think this will work? He just told us uh, from 200 to... Forget that one, my brother. No, for, for a school like uh, Funab, we understand how massive land espace, virgin no, on tab. Not work because we need the land for uh, not using it for presently, but we can do more if we have all. You understand? Okay, thank, thank you. I have to let have you go, uh, Doctor. Okay. And with this issue of land, this, this issue of uh, farm settings that I'm talking about is correct. Okay, I guess uh, yeah, the line, line is uh, eventually. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up with these messages and a final word from Ahmed. The policy is good, provided government is seriously ready to provide uh, necessary land, equipment, supervision, and storage, rather than keep acquiring tractors only. Any government in the southwest that is serious with a Greek must provide land level equipment at heavily subsidized rates to farmers and not political jobbers. A larger bad rule. Sent in that. As far as I'm concerned, the new policy by the Minister of Agriculture is a welcome development. People should wait and see how it would work rather than criticizing Olumide Adeshida sent in that one. For now, as an agriculture institution, should be advised to close shop in all irrelevances so as to be able to maximize time to become a hub in will of developing not only agricultural and industries but as well to develop the mankind. This will help Nigeria to develop agriculturally and move out of the oil industry. 
I don't know, they sent in that. Morning, Dylan, and Toby, the program is dead on arrival. If federal government fails to tackle the issue of Fulani headsmen, if the fund will be used judiciously at all. That's Kola Wale Joseph. Hello, I want to appreciate Rock City for this, as well as the guests. With the current curriculum, the policy, I'm afraid, might not succeed. What I think is priority should be given to agriculture as well as proper mandates. And if students are to start farming by 200 level, my question is, who will teach them? I'm not sorry to say, no lecturer uh, in FNAF can teach farming successfully. Uh, it is a joke. The whole university, a uh, farm practical year is a joke. The whole university needs to be restructured. And they call me from FNAF sent in that. Um, it's a good idea, but what of how to finance them? That Sonny sent in that message. Instead of asking the students to start their own farm, send the students to established farms so that student teachers are sent to schools for practicals. Or Lagoju from Ijoko. Uh, 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 yeah, the, the uh, one about uh, somebody adequately also who says uh, no lecturer in FUNAB can handle that if it is enforced. Okay, I would say I agree with him. The reason is this before you can train farmers, you have to be a farmer. Not only a lecturer. As a lecturer, you need to make reference to your own farm. That on my farm, this is what is happening. Is here. Not only what I what, what you read by one professor, something something from years ago. It should be what is practical. We need empirical something this time around. That is why the person said, he said uh, no, no, no lecturer can see successfully. Though there are lecturers that are still trying their best to make sure that I missed the underfunding of the university, they try well. I can remember we were taught on how to establish pasture. This just concluded semester. Why can't the Minister of Agriculture come around, see experts in the Department of Pasture and Rain Management, and let them proffer solutions to how to curb the issue of eight men crisis in Nigeria? But they will not do that. That's I mean, why I said if, the university if, is doing enough. If, for instance, it becomes a compulsory thing, yes. For you, then what are the things you think the government or school must provide? Number one thing is they need to reduce the workload. Okay, averagely, an, a 200 level student in FUNAB will do between 9 courses to 10 courses. There's no how you expect a student to do between 9 courses and 10 courses and still expect him to still be attending to another farm somewhere. It, need, it needs to be reduced. It's not about the bulk, it's about the value. The quality. You understand. All right, so this is our notes. I will call it a day on the show this morning. We want to appreciate every one of you who called, those who sent messages, those who tweeted, and those who put uh, comments on our Facebook page. We want to appreciate you also. And Thank you so much uh, for honoring your invitation. We wish you all the best. Thank you so much. All right, that's our show this morning. Tomorrow is the open day edition of the show. God bless you. God bless Nigeria. God bless Rock City FM. I am Toby. Joseph. And tomorrow the open day, keep the debate going. You can of course start uh, sending your short message to the short code, your short your message to the short code, and then the debate will continue on the open day tomorrow, Friday. Dele Ayodo is my name. I say God bless you all. God bless Nigeria and God bless Rock City. <laughs>